How many of you thinking we might just have been introduced to a little preacher there? That was all right. It is good to be with you this morning. Would you open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12? Romans chapter 12. We're in a series that they referenced seamless, woven together in the body of Christ. And we're asking this question, what is church all about? We hear all this news about the demise of the church. And you got to bear in mind that that started in the first century. It's not like that's new news in the 21st century. But as we've been focusing on it, we've landed on these three scriptural teachings that we are called to engage together, inspire together, and equip together, which means that there's these twin pillars of unity. The gospel what Jesus did on the cross to make us one, and the gifts that he gives, so that together, as Stephen has already referenced, together as the body of Christ, we build each other up, each using the gifts that God has given. We've looked at Ephesians chapter 4. Prior to that, we looked at 1 Corinthians 12. Today, we go to Romans chapter 12, so let's begin reading the word of God together. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members don't all have the same function, so in Christ, say that out loud with me, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. Look at someone next to you and say, I belong to you. Go ahead. Say it again. Turn to somebody else. I belong to you. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And so if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, give generously. If it is to lead, Do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, when we look at 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and Romans 12, we see some gifts that traditionally people have thought of as kind of specialized. Leadership, prophecy, teaching, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teacher, healing, miracles, tongues, and interpretation. And 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4 both say that not everyone is gifted in these areas. That doesn't surprise us. But did you notice the list of gifts in Romans 12? That in that, it included serving, encouraging, giving, showing mercy, and I was under the impression everybody was supposed to do that. I thought every Christian's supposed to give. How about you? I thought we were all commanded to encourage. I thought that all of us are commanded to show mercy and to serve, right? So what's up with this? What's up with this specialized list and this generalized list? Well, I think we can make sense of it if we go back to our original question. What is church all about? And I want to pose it this way. Is it a noun or a verb? Well, it's both. But in relationship to the gifts, it's a verb. You see, part of the challenge is the difference between organized religion and religion organized. Let that land on you for a minute. The difference between organized religion or religion organized. Jesus organized religion to accomplish the goals and activities of the gospel. This put Jesus at odds with those who were devoted to organized religion. Jesus said it like this, the Sabbath was made for people, not people for the Sabbath. We could say it this way, religion was made for the people, not people for religion. Right? I'm going to put a picture up on the screen. Who is this basketball player? Do you know who this is? Steph Curry, that's right. Is it his goal to play organized basketball or basketball? Who's this? Yes. Someone had it, Pele, right? He revolutionized soccer. Was the goal to play organized soccer or to play soccer? 
Who are these sisters? Yes. Venus and Serena Williams. Did they go to Wimbledon and say, we're here to play organized tennis? No. You see, we're not here to play organized religion. We're here to organize religion to accomplish the goals of God. And that is what Jesus did. That's why he was at odds with people. Jesus said, let me tell you about these two guys who went up to the temple to play or to, to pray. One of them went up there and said, oh, God, I thank you. I'm not like everybody else because my organized religion is spot on. The other guy came up there and said, God, I hope religion can do something for my soul. One of them was playing at organized religion. The other one was organizing religion to meet the needs of his soul. In organized religion, gifted people are the competition. You either have to pull them down or pass them up. Because in organized religion, it's all about the organization. Where are you in the organization? See? So when Jesus came along and he was growing in popularity, what did the organized religion people think? We've got to stop this guy. Why? Because he's the competition. We've got to pull Jesus down or we've got to pass him up. Jesus said, well, God's opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. You see, what Jesus was doing was he was organizing religion for the sake of the mission. When religion is organized to accomplish the mission of God, everyone and every gift is celebrated and incorporated. The gifts of the Spirit are given to implement activities of the gospel. Let's read that out loud together. The gifts of the Spirit are given to implement activities of the gospel. So the goal of prophecy isn't for you to be in front of a church. The goal of prophecy is to speak forth the word of God to announce the gospel in the world. Theologian Brian McLaren said it this way, the Christian story from Genesis until now is fundamentally about people on the move, outgrowing old, broken religious systems and embracing new, more redemptive ways of life. You see, when a church is all about organized religion, we're trying to figure out how to make the past fit into the present. When we're organizing religion to accomplish the mission of God, we're all about figuring out how every gift can be used to advance the gospel to the next generation. You see, the gifts of the gospel are for gospel activity that announce the kingdom of God, express the kingdom of God, expand the kingdom of God, sustain the kingdom of God, and reflect the life of the king. That, that's what the church is about. So when someone says, I'm not into organized religion, praise God. But Jesus would say, then why don't we organize our faith to impact the world? So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that this church is committed to organizing our faith around the mission of God. And that is also meant that many, many times we have found ourselves in new places, navigating new paths. I remember over 20 years ago when Anchor Ministry was launched. And that was new. And it was different. I can remember when I was... My wife and I and our family were considering moving here. I got a call from a man named Don Schultz who had been an executive for Ford Motor Company. But then spent the rest of his later life volunteering as a leader in the church. I met a man named Dennis Gertis who had spent a lifetime in the tech industry his whole career. And then spent the remainder of his life in volunteer and part-time ministry with this church I began to realize there's a different model here we're trying to figure out how to get the gospel shared with the world not figure out how to sustain a religious organization and those are different one of our long time ministers Justin Bagwell had been serving with us for over 17 years he is in the midst of a transition that is going to help our church live into the vision I've been describing for the last two weeks and I want to invite Justin to come and join us at this time. 
Would you welcome Justin Bagwell? Thanks, Don. Um, good morning, church. Uh, today has been a special morning. Um, I'll tell you that uh, we just finished this morning uh, our trail guide breakfast, actually in our youth center, um, where uh, 17 years ago, almost to the week, uh, I was in that Hebrews coffee house um, interviewing for this job. And uh, we had a special time of sharing uh, with some families and students that could be there. There's going to be more time to share with students after this. Um, But this is a a moment that I'm glad you're going to get to hear my voice. Um, I wrote it down just so I would have it. (laughs) But I want you to hear it clearly from me. This church has raised me. I started out as a 22-year-old kid here. I've grown in my relationship with God and my pursuit of Jesus. If you know me, you know that's true. I've grown in my understanding of the cultural lenses that I look through. I realize my privilege when I say this. But I've been blessed to serve as one of the student ministers in this church family. I am excited and extremely passionate about how God is calling me to serve at North Atlanta in a different capacity moving forward. Hear me say this. My family believes in the mission and the vision of this church. And this is where Bethany and I want to raise our kids. And I want that to sit for a second. In this season that feels discombobulated, It's a big word for me. I want you to hear me say that I am not leaving. I'm not leaving this church. Spent my whole adult life at this place. I have seen God move mountains in this place. Do things I never thought or could fathom. I am transitioning, though, off the NACC staff as a student minister at the end of the summer. Our family is excited to continue to serve in student ministry as well in new capacities. I have never attended an adult Bible class in the past 17 years at this church. Not one. Zero, actually. And I am looking forward to August 1st, looking at adults in a classroom, doing adult things. Stick to the script, Bagwell. I'm excited about serving in children's ministry alongside my own children. I'm excited about driving a bus for recovery, and Steve, I'm finally going to get my CDL. (laughs) Getting to know this church family outside of student ministry, along as continuing to serve in new capacities and supporting NASM, which has my heart. I will continue to support and serve along Kendra and these amazing students and families at NASM. I'm excited about my son growing up in this youth group and daughter. I will be starting a new job at GAC in August as the director of spiritual life. But you will see me here in the hallways, learning how to best use my gifts in a new role, a volunteer role. Those of you who know me know that my life mantra is never doubt your influence for the kingdom of God. And I believe that for each and every person in this church body, if I know you or if I don't. We are the church. Not just the people who are on staff, not the building, not the activities, but the all of us. All of us working together. We each play an important role that I thank you for your support 
as I step into a new role here at North Atlanta. I have prayed in this season, I have prayed for clarity, and the clarity and vision I have received from North Atlanta was each of us participating and encourage one another to fully live into what God has called us to be. I am ready to inspire in the capacities I can to serve for the kingdom of God in this church body, and I'm here, I'm telling you, it's going to be unplugged Justin Bagwell. Let's go. to serve alongside each of you in new and fresh ways, for each of us to realize how important it is to be in community with each other, to hold up one another, and each contribute our own unique gifts. Y'all, we've got them. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. Real talk. In some conversations over the past week, some have said to me, I'll believe it when I see it. Like me staying and serving. And I'll tell you, like, that's okay with me. Like, I make room for that. I welcome that. I'm excited to lean into what it will look like going forward. The Bagwell family is committed to this family. This is our family. You are our family. We are forever grateful for the countless ways you have loved us and supported us through joys and heartaches. Mm. You have loved and supported us in raising our two children. And I want to thank you for the ways I know you will continue to support us through this transition. I pray and ask for God's continual faithfulness. I pray for this church community to never doubt your influence for the kingdom of God and to remember that God is the best thing going for you. I'm here. I'm staying here. It's going to look different come August, but I am trusting God in it. God bless you. Thank you. I've had a little bit of time to digest that. When Justin first told me, I didn't do very well with it. I had a lot of feelings, and so we had many conversations, and we shared those with each other. But I love and respect this family. I believe in this family. I love serving with this family. I'm excited about the future. We are immersed in the vision of God for the world. We are being strategic and intentional about each transition, transition, and we want you to be in prayer about this transition and uh, the next wave of what God is doing in and through this church. We want you to be in prayer about that, be thoughtful about it. A few years ago, my wife and I were invited to the Atlanta Business League luncheon, which honors uh, business executives in Atlanta that have made a huge difference. One of our members was being honored. And I saw across the room Dikembe Mutombo, former NBA player, number 55, retired number with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, In the picture, I'm on the right. And uh, (laughs) I had met him at watching girls basketball. His daughter played girls basketball, and I'd met him before this. And so I wanted to hear what he was doing through his foundation. And he was sharing it. And then he just lit into a mini sermon. He said, someday I will stand before God and he will say to me, Dikembe, I gave you a body and a voice. What did you do with it? Pastor, someday you will stand before God and he is going to ask you and everyone else the same question. Do you remember his voice? It thundered. It was like God speaking. But he is right. God is speaking. God is moving. And all of us will stand before God and we will be asked, I gave you what I gave you. What in the world did you do with it? So what are the next steps? Well, to reiterate, some are saved. The Bagwells are a part of this church. 
Justin, Bethany, Burton, and Brooklyn Bagwell. And we are excited to be a part of your kids growing up at this church. And it's exciting to think of you getting to see you in an adult Bible class. Number two, some are on their way here. I introduced Kiva Maxwell last week by slide. I'm going to introduce Kiva Maxwell this morning. Kiva, stand up. Let us welcome you this morning. She will be our preaching intern this coming summer. She's the current um, student body president at Oklahoma Christian University. She's here with her father. Uh, They're here uh, to be here with us this morning and then also to look into Emory as one of her options for graduate school. And then some are launching from here. And this is uh, an important step as well. So many years ago, a family joined us from Indiana, and you guys know that's very special to us. That's where Susan is from, and that's where we were in ministry before we came here. This family arrived. We were excited to meet them. It was the Gwynn family, and that included Caleb and his brother, his mom, and his dad. And Caleb was in the youth ministry, growing up through this youth ministry, and then Caleb began volunteering in ministry, and then Caleb came on staff in ministry, growing in our tech ministry. Last October, we had the opportunity to celebrate with he and Caroline in their wedding, which many of us were there, and it was awesome. Well, he and Caroline are now moving into a full-time ministry position with a church in Florida, and so I want you to hear the progression of what's happening. Some are staying, some are on their way, and some are launching from here. So I'm going to invite Justin and Stephen back up and Caleb. Now you got to bear in mind, Caleb being on stage is not a thing for Caleb. <laughs> Caroline is at another opportunity this morning for some friends for launching her off as well as they will both be moving. But I want you to show your appreciation for Caleb Gwynn and his work at this church and in our tech ministry. And you take it from there. One time I'll do this too. All right, family. So you heard Don, and to honor Caleb, we won't keep him up here long. Uh, so just a few things, and many of you have you've known him a lot longer than than I have. He is though one of the most incredible human beings I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, He is thoughtful, he loves God, and out of that he loves people. So you've heard this in a number of different ways, but I want to say briefly, one of the things, there's several things I admire about Caleb, but one of them is when he came in, even in volunteering and then in working with the audio uh, uh, ministry, he set up a system where he has continually trained anyone who's come in to the audio system. So you could, those of you that are out there now that are thinking, I wonder if there's another way that I can serve. You've heard Don talking about, you've heard Justin um, looking forward to how he's going to continue to serve. And you're thinking, I wonder if I could go into the back where nobody, I don't have to come up on stage a lot, right? And I can help. And I can tell you now that even though Caleb is transitioning, he has set up a system where you could go into that system and learn be trained and serve God that way. That's just who he is. And he's going to go and do the same thing in Florida. And we're so happy about that. I'm ecstatic about the fact that he's married. I've been teasing him for the longest time. As when I first met Caroline, who is an amazing woman. And Justin and I are both excited. He, I mean, J- Justin has poured into him all while he was growing up here. So I want to just, I don't know if you want to say a few things and then I, right quick and then I want to pray. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, just Judy Gage asked me today, she said, um, how are you going to talk to the church? How, how are you going to make it through that? Like, aren't you going to just be a puddle? And I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay because I'm not saying goodbye. I'm not leaving. But then I was like, I'm going to have to <laughs> pray for Caleb. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Because um, the, the relationships here, um, I have seen Caleb 
uh, find his gifts that Don's just talked about and live into those at the fullest capacity. And this next venture for him is another ramp up to full capacity. And he is our family. And what an incredible letter of recommendation that is going out into the world. Um, I am so excited for this venture for Caleb and honored to have been his youth minister and to serve alongside him as a peer. It's been so humbling and a special gift. So, thank you, man. So, yeah, let's pray. Father, we come to you and we are thankful uh, for the entire Gwen family, for all that they mean to the kingdom, for the way that they have used their gifts uh, to serve. And we come especially now thankful for Caleb and just what he means to this church family. Um, and then also Caroline and them together uh, as a family, what they mean to this church family and what they're going to mean to your kingdom even as they go into Florida and continue uh, using the gifts you have given him to bless your kingdom. As Justin says and tells us often, we should never doubt our influence, and the influence of Caleb will be here and continue to move and lead here even in his absence, but it will also, with him physically, travel to Florida and continue to grow your kingdom. The message of the life of Caleb is that God is the best thing going for us, and we are grateful for that. So we want to lift him up. We want to ask that you bless him, and we want to bless him in sending him and to his next ministry as we together are the church, and we grow the church through the Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. This prayer we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the church said, amen. Thanks, Caleb.